One of the best parts about genealogy is finding the stories of our ancestors. And we find those stories in the records. Family Search's full text search is an incredible beta tool. They now have over 1.4 billion records you can search. And I'm gonna show you how you can get the most out of this incredible tool and how you can even organize and save those records. I've also created a helpful guide and you can get it in the link below. To get started, let's look at Joseph Dixon, my fourth great grandfather. He died in Perry County, Tennessee in 1898, and he was born in 1795, someplace in Tennessee. Over here on the right, I entered Joseph Dixon's name, and then I hit search, and I got over 36,000 views. So let's narrow this down to something that is more helpful. Now, if you have specific keywords, I could put something here. I could put his wife's name. I can put a place here, a year range. If I even have a specific image group number, I could enter it there. But I usually use these filters instead. You can filter by collection. And there's lots of collections in different parts of the world even. And I'm not going to start there. We, we could filter by year. All the way back to the 1000s. This is interesting, but... We are mainly looking 1800s. We could filter by place or record type. And record type, I've noticed these are not always correct, but it's a good way to drill down and see what you get. But for the most part, I usually start with place and or year. I'm gonna start with place. Since I did a live stream on this subject a couple months ago, they've added some new places. For example, Africa and Canada and the Caribbean and the Pacific Islands and even continental Europe. For now, I'm gonna look at the United States and I'm gonna look at Tennessee. So I'm selecting Tennessee and I could select Perry. Wow, 151 documents. I'm gonna hit apply. And here we have, for example, a court docket. Up here, we have two ways we can view um, the information that's within these documents. Fact view is on right now, so it talks about who are the people that are listed on that document, what places, and my family did live in Linden and Perry County, and what years are mentioned. Here's another one with a lot more people, some additional places, and some years all the way back to 1797. If we turn that off, instead we see actual quotes basically from these documents. And so we get a better idea of what to expect in here. Here it appears to start, this document is something about the state of Tennessee. We, Joseph Dixon of Perry County and somebody else. And there was a suit about Joseph Dixon. Here's another one. It's a boundary line of, of Joseph Dixon. There's witnesses that include Joseph Dixon, a deed of conveyance from Joseph Dixon. And here's MJ Dixon, who is Joseph's son. That is also my ancestor, Matthew J. Dixon of the one part and just Dixon of the other part, I think we might start with this one. Now let's take a look at what we have here. First, here in the middle, we have this document. It says, this is from Deeds of Perry County from 1867 to 1873. It's image 278 of 663. If you're used to going page by page through family search records or searching for certain pages, that's what you're used to seeing. Then we have over here on the right, we have Here's a little button where we can copy this transcription. So then we could even paste it into an AI and have it help us clean it up, or we can clean it up ourselves. We can download the video, the document here. We can show keyed words or turn those off. So anytime we had Joseph Dixon or Joseph Dixon, they're highlighted in yellow right now, but I could also turn those off. I can ask AI to summarize the document. And then we have the transcript over here. We can also see, again, if you've worked much with family search, this is the grid view. I'm gonna to switch to it for a second. This is showing lots of pages so we could look around. This one that's highlighted blue is the one we were on. I'm clicking on it to get back to it. We could also download from here. We can do some image adjustment here. We can change the brightness, the contrast. We can invert the image colors. Sometimes that helps you read things better. We can rotate it to the left or the right if it's sideways. We can maintain image zoom, which I'm actually not exactly sure what that is. We can also look at keyboard shortcuts. Over here, we can reset the view so it's back to, the, if we've zoomed in, we can now reset it where it goes back to the original view, or we can uh, zoom out or zoom in so we can get to a specific place that we want to see. 
Now, one of my favorite things for organizing and returning back to these documents is the source box. If I click on this, I can say add image to source box. And when I go there, this is the home folder, but I have folders for different families I'm working on. It says create new folder. I've not been able to do it through this view, but I can, let's get out of here, go to my source box. And here I can create a new folder. So new folder, and I'm gonna say Joseph Dixon add. And I can now add this, click on that, say add image to source box and choose Joseph, Joseph Dixon. And it's saying that it's this deed. I could put a lot more notes. For now, I'm just gonna click save. And then let's look at what this document is. I'm gonna zoom in and look over here. We can also, I'm gonna move myself up here and we're gonna scroll down till we start seeing these yellow words because this is where it starts. And it starts with this indenture made and entered in between MJ Dixon. Over here on the right, we have the page number 523 and then it says, this indenture made and, and we don't have entered into between. That did not get, um, it instead has these little keyboards, which I cannot click on. I've actually not really seen that before. MJ Dixon of the one part and just Dixon at the other part, both of the County of Perry and state of Tennessee. If we come down here, it says executed by the said MJ Dixon to Joseph Dixon to me uh, in hand paid and delivered. And the further consideration of the natural love affection I have for my father, the said Joseph Dixon, and my mother, Rachel Dixon. And so it specifically states that relationship. This is a wonderful document. Now, going back to this page, let's look at these search tips. If you have something in quotation marks, it says it has to find the exact word or phrase. And so I used quotation marks. And so Joseph Dixon had to be on that page like that. If I wanted it to include another specific word, I could say plus, and we had Rachel, his wife. So if I clicked Rachel, his wife, and then hit enter, we see we now have fewer documents. And it's not, again, necessarily Rachel Dixon. On this case, you see we've got this Rachel Pace. But this is um, Joseph and Rachel Dixon. Here's Rachel Wade. But that's a way we could get to narrow down a search, especially if you've just got a lot of things or you're looking for something specific. Now, this is Thomas Whitlow, my six times great grandfather. He was the father of two boys, Robert and Thomas B. Whitwell. And Thomas Sr. basically died in 1775 in Charlotte County, Virginia. And his two sons were both young children and they were bound out to different people. And there's a lot of stories around that and records I've found. I don't know much about Thomas. I don't know when he was born, but he died in Charlotte County, Virginia. And so I was hoping to find out more records about him because all I have are these records about his children, about his death, and then his children being bound out. So we're going back to the main page of the labs, and I'm going to search for Thomas Whitwell. And now I want to narrow it down to Charlotte County, Virginia, in the 1700s because he died in 1775. Let's start with year. I want the 1700s and I'll apply. And the place, I want the United States, Virginia, and we can narrow down to Charlotte, although I might later wanna play with a broader range and look at boundary changes and stuff. So again, we have the fact view where we can see Thomas Whitwell is listed on these different documents, or I could switch it to this view and we can actually see what it says about Thomas Whitwell. So here this looks like it's somebody else's wi uh, will and they are giving something to Thomas Whitwell. Actually, I think this is when he's buying something. So let's pop that open for a second. Here we have, this is an account of the current, oh, an account current of the estate of somebody deceased. And it looks like the last name is Harwood. The first name might start with a T or D. That could be David, or it could be blocked out. But if we scroll down a little bit, this is, I guess, some money that was owed to Thomas Whitwell. So that's why he showed up on that one. We come back here. We have on the motion of Thomas Whitwell, a witness. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to zoom in a couple times. This, we can see it says 1765 to 1777. It says on the motion of Thomas Whitwell, a witness for John 
Tankers, Tankersley, in his suit against William Holt, it is ordered that the said Tankersley pay him for two days attendance according to law. If we scroll up to see when this was, this was 1767. And so this is actually an older record than I had before because I really only had records about his death in 1775. But it makes sense. This is Charlotte County, Virginia, where Thomas Whitwell, which is not a very common name, where he was living. We keep scrolling down. Here's another probably piece of that same thing. And here we have, this is one of the records I'd found before, but let's take a look at it because it's a very important record in this family. So we see a lot of different words here. A lot of those are just saying Thomas, but if we scroll in, this is the one that's so important. We've got two lines here and I'm going to read them. This says, order that the overseers of the poor of the first district find out Thomas Southern Whitwell. Now, this is really interesting. It's the only document I ever see where the son, because here it says orphan of Thomas Whitwell, the son is called Thomas Southern Whitwell. And so most people have Southern as his middle name. I still have not put that because I just feel a bit unsure about it because I see him usually just as Thomas Whitwell. So um, this could very well be his middle name and or nickname or something, but I haven't included it yet. So they're binding him out to Benjamin Morton, according to law, and for reasons appearing to the court, it is further ordered that William Brumfield, his former master, be discharged from the performance of the conditions of his indenture, entered into with the church warden for and on behalf of the said orphan. Now, this is also really interesting because Thomas Sr., Tom, Thomas the father, has a middle initial B on some records. And many people are saying that his middle name was Brumfield. I don't know, but there is some connection to Brumfield. But this is showing, so these young men in Virginia, they would be bound out so that they would be clothed and taken care of and earn a trade. That's my understanding. I should do more research. And it sounds like first he was bound out to one person and now they're saying, okay, that is going to be broken and we're going to bind him out to somebody else. And then we have another line. It says, order for reasons appearing to the court that Robert Whitwell, so this is the brother, orphan of Thomas Whitwell, be discharged from the service of William Brumfield. So the same man that had both of them as his, they were both bound out to him. His um, master to whom he was bound as an apprentice. So he was an apprentice. He learned some type of a skill or a trade. And that the said William Brumfield be also discharged from the performance of the conditions of his indenture entered into with the church wardens of the parish of Cornwall. Now, this is interesting because we have these church wardens. So I wonder if there's something more in the church records. And this, let's go to the top to see what year this was. This is 1790. I believe that it's possible that William was at this time aging out of the system. And if that was 1790, this is what I have an approximate date. So he's about 19, 20, 21. I'd have to see what the laws were and stuff. But those are some great records. Now let's look at another one of my ancestors and see what records we can find to help expand on his story. We have John Bookout, my four times great grandfather, who was born in 1782 in Virginia and died in 1857 in Missouri. And if we scroll down, we see that he was probably born in Virginia, according to some records that he resided in Anderson County, Tennessee, married in Knox County, Tennessee, um, in Wayne County, Tennessee in 1820 and 1830. And then in 1840, he was in Fentress County, Tennessee. Now, I decided to look for records in Fentress County, Tennessee, just wanting to build out his story. And we're going to search for John Bookout. Now, I want to narrow it down to the 1800s since we're looking. He lived there in the 1840s and apply. And then I want to look at Fentress County, Tennessee in particular, to see if I can build out more about that part of his life. So place, United States, Tennessee, Fentress. Apply. Now I have the view as not fact view. Again, fact view just lists the people who are on it, the places, the years, or we can get little snippets, which is what I have it. This is a deed from 1820 to 1848. This would be a really early record for him because, um, again, he was living there in the 1840s and I don't have much early records for him. Here we can see some records I haven't even opened yet. We've got 
something about a marriage. Um, and this, I want to take a look at this. This is a deed. I said, all the lands conveyed by John book out to me. I want to take a look at this one. I don't think I've looked at it before. It's fun just searching these records. And I know I need to pause and go back and add everything, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. So let's zoom in. We can see John book out right here. But let's come down to the bottom. This is I, Benjamin Brannon Sr. of the County of Fentress in the state of Tennessee, have this day bargained and sold, and by these doth convey unto William Brannon of the same state and county for the consideration of $700. So, but in the end, he says this was all, he describes land beginning out of pine and cedar, then uh, running southward, southwardly to a dogwood. But it says, Thence westwardly to the beginning, including all the lands conveyed to John, conveyed by John Book out to me. So there should be an earlier will. This is 1865. There should be an earlier will where John Book out conveys some of this land to Benjamin Brannan. Let's take a look at this record here. And we can see over here, it says between John Bookout of the County of Fentress and State of Tennessee of the one part and Benjamin Brannon of the other. This is that earlier deed, or at least an earlier deed. We can see that John Bookout is selling this land to Benjamin Brannon here. And since he's selling this in the 1840s, I believe this is, in the year of our Lord, 1847, I want to find an earlier record where John Bookout got this land in Fentress County. So that's really cool. Let's see if we can find that. So I just scrolled through looking for other deeds from 1820 to 1848. This might be it. I need to go into more detail, see if the land is described the same. But this is from 1843, and this is land that John Bookout is buying. Um, so doth grant, bargain, sell, and confirm unto the said John Bookout his heirs and assigns. So this might be that early land record. So let's make sure we have added that to my source box, which I can do here, add image to source box, so I can work on it more later. I'm gonna click on this and click on John Bookout. Again, I could say he's buying land here and I could describe it or something and click save. And now when I go into my source box, it's there. I would also want to download a copy of this for my own records. I would probably turn off this keyword so we don't get that yellow part and download and save it. And I do most of my work on uh, Ancestry. So I would want to add that record here. So we'd have a fuller showing of his of John Bookout's life. If you'd like to get this two page quick reference guide to family search full text search, you can sign up for it in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.